I don't know about you, but planning and shooting documentaries has always been the fun part for me. Even the edit process, as tedious as it can be, has its moments when you feel like your story is really coming together. But finishing something, like finally exporting it and sharing it with the world type of finishing, is something else entirely. The roller coaster of excitement, emotions, and usually a healthy quantity of regrets thrown in that filmmakers go through is, for me anyways, a huge part of why this job is so stimulating. Making a film from start to finish is fun, nerve-wracking, incredibly frustrating, and ultimately one of the most satisfying things I could ever imagine doing with my time. So in this video, I'm gonna share some of the key takeaways from each stage of the production process from pre-pro to filming and through to the edit so that you can get some ideas for what to do and maybe more importantly, what not to do on your next film. And at the end, I'll break down exactly how much we spent to make this film happen and let you know where and when you can see the full version. But for now, let's get into it and explain why I'm sitting out here in the middle of the forest. Right away, you can probably see I'm not in my studio like normal. I'm actually way up north in the Canadian Arctic for the next three months for a shoot, hence the radio and bear spray and the fact that I haven't changed my clothes in three days. That all means that my videos for a while are gonna be a little bit different than you're used to, and obviously the sound and lighting are gonna be a bit rougher than in my office. But at the end of the day, I'm not a full-time YouTuber, I'm a working DP, and I gotta make some compromises if I wanna keep getting these videos out. So thanks for being patient with me, and hopefully you're cool with me doing these videos from out behind my desk. Anyways, you might have seen some of the BTS content from the shoot that I'm talking about. I released them earlier in a three-part series. But for a quick recap, this film is about Jose, a former soldier who stepped on an ID in Afghanistan and became a triple amputee overnight. He went through some crazy dark times, but eventually he started surfing through a veterans program and found something new to live for. Now he's on a mission to become a serious adaptive surfer and inspire others through his journey. It's an amazing story and a great lead into the first piece of advice I'd give to anyone wanting to make a film for themselves, and that's to start with your character first. A character who wants something and then changes over time is so, so important for telling a story. And one of the biggest issues I see with projects pitched by newer filmmakers is that they have a really interesting topic, but there's no story. Like it's really easy to confuse story and topic, but to make your film great, you want to tell a story, which usually means finding a character who wants something and either gets or doesn't get what they want over time. The struggles of wounded veterans is a topic, for example. The rise of adaptive surfing is a topic, but a wounded veteran on a mission to change his life through surfing is a story. Now, I'm definitely not the only one preaching this stuff online, and if you like my channel, odds are you've probably heard of Mark Bone's channel and the Art of Documentary Film School that he and his business partner, Micro. Actually, the only reason that this whole film exists in the first place is because AOD has started funding small projects and giving out micro budgets to filmmakers like me to actually go out and make stuff. So a big thanks to them for putting their money where their mouth is and actually helping us to make stuff. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about and you've never heard of the art of documentary, uh, they've got a really great thing going on there with courses on everything from story structure all the way through editing. The doors opened a few days ago, which only happens twice a year, so if that's sounds like something you'd be interested in. I think enrollment will be open for the next two weeks-ish. They're not sponsoring this video or anything, but they've been a longtime friend of this channel and they're giving all my viewers a discount code uh, that will save you 10% on any of their modules, plus send a little kickback my way. So check out the link in the description and use the code LUKE10 if you wanna save some cash and support this channel at the same time. And just in case people are wondering, hey, didn't you just release a cinematography course of your own? How can you also recommend AOD? The answer is pretty simple. It's we're not competitors. We come from different parts of the filmmaking world. We approach teaching in different ways. And whether you want to learn filmmaking from me or Mark or AOD or anyone else for that matter, all I care about is that you're actually going out there and going for it. So no, just because I have my own stuff now doesn't mean I'm gonna stop repping AOD because we're all part of the same community here. It's not me versus them. That's a scarcity mindset. It's all of us growing together and pushing the whole documentary community to do better work. Sorry, I had to get that out of the way before the comments start rolling in like I'm sure they will. 
The next thing I'd say I learned from this whole experience was just how much can be accomplished with minimal resources. Now, I come from the mainstream documentary industry, and it's totally normal for us to spend millions of dollars per shoot. Like, the reason I'm not in my normal studio right now is because I'm out on a long-term show that's gonna cost something like $13 million to make. I've got nearly 30 people out here in a remote location to make this thing happen, and the amount of gear and logistics that goes into making something like this is mind-boggling. So when I took on the micro grant from AOD Films for $5,000, even though that's real money for normal people, I knew the team and I would have to be pretty resourceful to pull it off. I mean, this was an international shoot. I'm Canadian and Jose lives in California, and we had three crew members, including myself, who needed hotel rooms and food and transportation paid out of that budget. That meant skipping a lot of the things that I'm used to on big shoots like massive rental budgets and big crews, but in the end, I think we did a really nice job even while spending very little money, relatively speaking. Speaking. And I know $5,000 is a lot of money, but in the scope of film production and considering we had to travel to another country, it's almost nothing. But you know what? I'm really not sure if you can see that much of a difference between the work I do for Netflix or National Geographic and this short film. Maybe in some back-end things like sound mixing and expert color grading, but in general, I think this scrappy little project looks just as good as what I'd make with 10 times the budget. So the lesson is don't let money get in the way. You don't need as much as you think you do to make this kind of thing. And to tack an extra point on there, if you're just starting out and don't have a ton of money for your projects, a tip that I really want to stress is to stay local. Don't plan huge expeditions for your films. Pick stories that are close to home that you can access easily and your money is gonna stretch a lot further. Like if we didn't go to California, we could have spent over a month with Jose on the same budget. So if you do decide to apply for some funding for your film, maybe even through AOD Films, then don't do what we did. Stick close to home because I guarantee that there are amazing stories to tell and your money will go way, way further. The next takeaway I wanna to touch on for small run and gun productions like this is just how important pre-production is to the whole process. I mean, pre-pro is always important no matter what size your project is, but when you're working with really limited funds in a short timeline like we were, I mean, we shot the whole thing in four days, you can't really just afford to show up and see what happens. We could only afford four shooting days maximum, so before we got on a plane, I had tons of calls with my directing partner, Eros, as well as with Jose, to make sure that we understood what story we were telling and what elements we needed to make it happen. Like I say all the time on this channel, if you want your doc to really tell a powerful story, you need to think in terms of scenes, not B-roll with voiceover. And in order to capture enough real scenes in just four days, we needed to know what most of them would be in advance. We didn't just show up at Jose's house and say, okay, what should we film today? Because that would have been a disaster with so little time to work with. No, instead we showed up with a list of scenes we thought would speak to his story, then we talked them over with Jose and his wife, we cut the ones they didn't like, and then we got to work. It's not like we scripted the entire thing because in the end there are quite a few moments that we didn't expect that just sort of happened and made it into the final film. Like, how his wife Lisette braids his hair before he goes surfing and a bunch of other stuff. But even though we allowed for some spontaneous moments to unfold, and you should too, we always had a plan to fall back on and we knew what the spine of our story was going in. If you've got months and months to work on something, then a pure verite fly in the wall approach might work. But when you're trying to get a lot done in a very short time, don't sleep on pre-production. Both modules one and two of AOD have units on pre-pro, but for my money, module two goes deeper and the lesson about the character being a co-director is great advice that most film schools gloss over, so check those out if you're looking for pre-pro tips. Okay, so the next point I'm gonna make here isn't really something new that I've learned, but it's something that I have to constantly remind myself over and over again, and that's that you have to be really diligent about setting aside dedicated time for the edit. What can really easily happen with small projects like this is that you get super excited for the idea and the shoot, then you get back and you've got like 13 hours of footage to comb through and the whole thing just slows way down. Organizing footage and getting your first rough cut done is time consuming and pretty annoying if I'm being honest. And then after that, there's multiple rounds of feedback and re-edits and then all the fine tuning things like sound and grading. And if you don't set aside dedicated days or even weeks just to roll up your sleeves and get it done, 
then these things can drag on forever. I mean, we shot this thing in February and between my full-time job as a DP and running this YouTube channel, it's been way too easy to just push the edit to the side while I wait for a convenient day. But there's probably never going to be a convenient day, so you just have to make the days happen, whether it's convenient or not. Or you're going to never finish your film. And a half finished or even a three quarter finished film is essentially the same thing as no film at all. So just make time and get it done. Remember your triple Fs, filmmakers finish films. If you don't finish it and share it, it basically doesn't exist. Lastly, make sure you're not operating in a vacuum chamber and that you're getting as much advice from people you trust as possible. As I was editing this film, I sent it to a lot of different people and in the end, their input made the film much stronger. I had several calls with Mark and Mike as well as my filmmaking friends around the world and without all their feedback, I kind of think I would have had a much worse final export. Filmmaking is a team sport at the end of the day, and if you aren't getting outside perspectives, the work probably won't hit its full potential. So ask your friends, reach out to other filmmakers you know, or join online communities. AOD has a great online Facebook group you can access to once you're a member, and I see people on there every day getting feedback on their projects. But wherever you go for advice, you're doing your story a disservice if you only work in an echo chamber of your own ideas. So what did this thing cost? In the end, we spent just over $5,000 to make this film. The vast majority of it went to travel and accommodation, like I said. Flights and baggage were around 1,500 bucks, hotels were just over 1,000, and food and gas worked out to be 980 for the week. Eros and I didn't pay ourselves anything, but we did pay our camera assistant and BTS shooter Richard $1,000 as a token fee. Now I know that's a terrible rate for a multi-day international shoot, but he's a good friend and he did it as a favor. On top of that, we also needed to license some stock footage of Jose on big waves because on our surfing day, the waves were tiny. We did get some really great footage of him in the water and you'll see it in all the moody shots in there. But for all the shots where he's flying down the face of an eight foot wave, we had to buy those off an underwater DP based in San Diego. And we spent another $500 for the rights to that footage. That brings the cost to just under five grand. Then I spent another $500 on sound design and mixing, which was also an incredible discount from a friend who wanted to help out for a grand total of $5,492. And that's you US dollars I'm talking about, not the adorable Canadian dollars I have in my bank account. That's real money, but it's also dirt cheap relative to what most film productions cost, and I'm super proud of what we were able to pull off. The film is going to premiere at the second AOD Film Festival in New York, which I think is happening in November sometime, so hopefully I'll have a chance to meet some of you there assuming I get out of the Arctic in time. Big shout out to AOD for helping me make this film possible. And if you do decide to join the next cohort, don't forget to use the code Luke10 to save 10%. The doors are only gonna be open for the next two weeks or so, and they only open twice a year. So if you've been thinking about it, you'll probably wanna act pretty quickly. Hope that video gave you some ideas for what to do with your own next short film, and maybe even inspired you to get out and actually make something. The final film is gonna launch in November, like I said, and I'll keep you in the loop when I know the exact dates. See ya.